you are going to learn right now how to count vehicles and people from a security camera in real time. Uh, hi, welcome to this new video. My name is Sergio and I help company students and freelancers to easy and efficiently build visual recognition projects. We will see today a project regarding people and vehicle counting in just five steps. This is one of the most requested projects I get because it's so useful for companies to get uh, analysis information. For example, if you have a shop and you want to estimate how many people are entering in comparison of how many people are passing by. So if 1000 people are crossing the road in front of your shop and only 10 people are entering, let's say, you can understand and make some study on how to improve that. The same is for the gas station. If your security camera is able to see the road in front of your gas station, you can count all the vehicles, also the type of the vehicles, if it's a car, a bus, uh, a truck, and so on, and compare them with how many people are entering in your place. And we will see this, how to make this very accurate and in a few steps. So let's start. The first step will be object detection. So we need to get the video footage. In this case, I have a uh, a video on a file but it's the same process if you get that from the camera so instead of putting the video file you will just put the link of your IP CCTV camera and it will be the same here we have the camera as you see and as it's common for CCTV camera it's not so smooth so it has probably up to just 10 frames per second so you, we can see some lag also when the people are walking right here and also we see some lag when the cars are moving but that's fine we don't need to have anything that smooth as long as the view is clear so let's start with object detection i will now prepare object detection and i will tell you how we can do that now to perform object detection we need to use a deep learning model so that we can de detect the objects the deep learning model is going to give us two important things. One is bounding boxes of each object, so the exact position of where each object is located on the screen. And second, also the class name of that specific object. So if that bounding box is a car, is a person, a bus, a truck, and so on. We're going to use the YOLO version for right now because it's the easiest and fastest to integrate and it's compatible with OpenCV. I recommend not to waste a lot of time on the or choosing the deep learning model because I see uh, many people doing this, like asking, but which version is better Like if I try this one? Uh, these are only a small part of the project and you can, at the end of the project, maybe try to uh, change some parameters of the deep learning model or to change the deep learning model, but not now because it's not worth the time and return of investment. Now let's run this one and we will see how it works and what we need to do after this. So let's start. Oh, this is what we are detecting right now. The deep learning model is going to give us a lot of objects up to 80 categories. I will quickly show you later what we can detect. We have also the chairs, the dining table. We have a lot of things that we don't really need. We only need the car, so the different type of vehicles, car, bus, truck, and so on. We need the people, and we see the people that are crossing this area are detected. So we see person right here, person right here. Then we see the car is detected, the car that is coming here, also the bus is detected. One important thing that we need to know, it doesn't need to be precise on all the frame because we don't really care about the entire frame. When we want to count the people crossing on a certain area, we need to consider this as if it was a race where there is a starting line and an ending line. So for example, here we have the cars that are crossing. We don't care about the cars that are somewhere here far away. I don't know if you see the blue line that I'm drawing on the screen. We need to select a starting line and ending line. So we can have a starting line right here. We start to track the car when it's crossing this blue line doesn't matter like the direction i mean actually it matters so we start counting the cars coming this way and we stop 
detecting them on this ending line. So everything that happens outside this area, it's not our problem, at least for counting vehicle, because this is where we're counting the vehicle. So if the detection is wrong on this area right here, it doesn't matter as long as it's accurate on this specific area because that's where the counting happens. The same when you work, like if it was a person trying to detect them when when objects are really far, of course, it's it's hard to detect them, but you don't have to check them where they're far, just check them where they are exactly in front of you. This is object detection. Now we have too many objects, we don't need them. So we're going to select only the objects that we need and I'm going to show you how we can do that. By the way, all the code that I'm using right here and all the explanations are on my course, Object Detection with OpenCV and Deep Learning. So if you want to build this project, all the material is on the course. And now, uh, quickly, I will go quickly through, through this. Here we have Object Detection, the class loaded. Here we're loading the video. If you don't have the video, you, you can also put the link of your CCTV camera and it will work right away instead of the video file. Now, when we detect the objects here, we have class IDs, we have scores, we have boxes. From the class IDs, we know which object this is. How do we know that? Because we have classes, we have a list. If it's class zero, uh, zero is the first, it's person. If it's class one, it's bicycle. Class two is the car, motor, bike, and so on. By default, the deep learning model I'm trained on Coco dataset, which is a dataset which contains 80 really common object categories, and we have them all right here, 80 categories of the most common objects. And now, uh, how do we select only the things that we need? Here we have, when we look through all the objects detected, we have class name, what do we do? We say, if class name equals person, then only in this case we want to display the object detected, otherwise we don't care. Or even better, consider that we also want vehicles and like car, truck, we can do a list of objects allowed. So objects allowed, allowed objects equals allow object equals we have we want to allow what we want to allow person then we want to allow the car the truck the bus the probably the bicycle i'm not sure if i'm typing bicycle correctly probably not bicycle i uh, probably now i got it right and then motorbike uh i Probably I got most of the vehicles. There must be some, there might be some other category, but now we're just doing some standard, standard detection, so we don't care. So we have the allowed object. We want only that to detect these one, two, three, four, five, six objects. So what do we do? If class name in allowed objects, so in this case only we display the class. So let's check how this works. And now you can see the difference here before we were detecting the tables we were detecting the chairs now that's not happening anymore we are detecting only class person that you see crossing here on the sidewalk we are detecting the cars which have a green bounding box and we're detecting the bus and also trucks so this car is detected by mistake as truck sometimes as a car but doesn't matter because that's far when they are closer, the detection, of course, is much better than what we uh, see when, the, when it's far. With object detection, pretty much we are done. There is nothing to do because object detection, the model works right away. We just select the objects that we want. We don't have to do any training or any, uh, any complex operations on this specific step. After object detection, we need to move to object tracking and you will understand why it's so crucial and important to have object tracking. So let's check that. There is 
a crucial difference between object detection and object tracking. Object detection is the detection of the objects on a single frame. So even when we have a video, the objects are detecting frame after frame. So we don't have a connection between or over time. So between the frames, object tracking keeps track of these objects over time between the frames to make sense. So if this is not clear to you, it will make definitely more sense when we run this in real time. And I will show you what this mean. But now for simplicity, I freeze this frame so that you can understand better. Let me, uh, let's focus only on this person that it's right here. Let's say that we want to count the people on the sidewalk. So we put a starting line and an ending line. Uh, let's, let's draw it right here. So this is the starting line and this one is the ending line. So when the person enters between these two lines, so let's also close this area, we start tracking the person. Now let's go slowly until when, okay, the person now is inside. So now we can say, we can add the count plus one. We can say one person is inside. So one person is going to that direction. When we have a video in real time, there is, the video is just frame after frame. So we have a sequence of images. So now we have one person inside. Now we go to the next frame. You will see now the person moved. We know that it's the same person, but now it's a new image and the code object action doesn't know that this is the same person. So it will count again, a new person is inside. So we have two people right now on the count when it's actually only one. And so for each new frame of this person, now it changed the position. It's again, new person. We don't know that it's the same. I mean, we know, but the code doesn't know and it will be count three. This is why we need object tracking. Object tracking means, means associating an ID, univocal ID to that specific object. So for example, this is person with ID one. When we see another person, it will be ID two and so on. To do this, there are different algorithms that approach this. For example, now the person, one way will be the distance between the frames, let's say, this person is right here. This is the center position of the person. When this person will move. Okay. Now the person changed the position. How can we know that it's the same person? We can know because the point, the position of the per where the person is right now, it's very close to where the person was before. So that's how we can say, okay, if the position is so close, it must be that same person. So we keep ID one and it's the same person. If the person was right here, the distance is so big that it cannot be the same person. So this is the concept of object tracking. We have different algorithms, which I will not get into now because it will take a lot of time, but one of the most common are sort and deep sort. Sort, mm, deep sort is better, but it requires more processing power sort works. Okay. So it depending on the occasion, you can use either sort or deep sort. Now I will implement deep sort on this one and I will show you how it is going to work with the object tracking. And the second step is object tracking. So in addition to the object detection object code that I initialized at the beginning, I also added the deep sort tracker. So a couple of lines and later when we detect the object, also we implement the tracker on the while loop. And now let's see what will be our result after we have the object tracker implemented. So I'm going to run the code. Uh, what we see when we have object tracking is that the same vehicle keeps the same ID when moving and also the same is for the people. 
So we see ID two, ID still ID two. So it's different frames, same car, so same ID. Deep sort is able to correctly track the objects, in this case, vehicles and people over the frames. And the same is for these cars. And then also let's see this person is ID 39. And we are sure that it's correct because the person is moving and still it keeps the same ID. You might notice that not on the entire frame, the ID detection is correct. Uh, so because on some specific parts, the object detection is better than some other parts. And also sometimes it happens that some big vehicles is uh, hiding the person. So if some bus is coming, for example, we, we don't see anything on the sidewalk. So the best way now is to find the most clean area where there is always a good view of the camera in order to track the people on that specific area. For example, I noticed that the cars, when the car are coming this way, uh, they are always correctly detected somewhere here. So I will say this is the starting line from this road and this is the ending line. So we, when we want to count the cars on this road right here, this one, we, we don't care the, uh, of the ID position when it's somewhere here. We only want to count it when it's crossing this area right here. For the people also, we can select some areas. So it will be, for example, like this or this. When the people are crossing this area, we can count them. So we don't care about the detection outside of this box. We only do the tracking when they are entering this area. So this is pretty much what you need to uh, know about object tracking. I use the deep sort algorithm. You can also use the sort algorithm, which is more simplified without the deep learning. It will be less precise, but it will be, it will be faster. So it depends on the speed on your computer or the devices that you're using, or if you're using like Nvidia Jetson, Xavier or Jetson Nano. So uh, speed is important in this case and you need to keep the algorithm as light as possible. Now, uh, we're going to go to the third step, which is the ROI selection. So we're going to, on the code R, add an ROI selection, selecting an area so that we can count them. So let's go to point number three. Now, the ROI selection means selecting a specific area or areas because probably we have more because we have one for the vehicles and one for the people where if a vehicle or a person is crossing that area we will take the information from that uh, that person that object tracked and we will use later that for the counting in order to select an roi you can do this either with OpenCV with the code but it will require a lot of coding which i find not necessary in this case a simple solution would be just to save a frame from the video, then open the frame with some image editing software so that we can find the specific coordinates of the ROI that we are interested in. Now I'm using GIMP, which is free to use. Uh, you can use Photoshop or probably even Paint. I'm not sure if Paint gives us the coordinates, but any editing software where, when I move the mouse right here on the bottom left of the screen, I will, uh, I will make a uh, blue mark, check the screen. You see right here, there are the coordinates where I made that blue mark. And so let me select an area. So one is this area right here, which I'm not able to draw for some reason. Okay, I got it, I got it. Now, one is the area right here. So if the car is crossing this area, then we want to make the count. So I'm drawing this, but now I'm going to take the coordinates because we need coordinates to draw this on OpenCV. So I'm going to get a few points. One is this point right here. We have 257, 347. The second point is 427, 340 and so on. So I'm going to get the points and I will draw this on OpenCV. Uh, now I'm running this in real time. You can see that I did replicate the exact same position that I had 
on GIMP on the image editing software right here. So I took the point position and let me show you what I have right here. So I created an ROI. These are the points which represent that specific polygon, the yellow polygon that it's uh, this one. And this is the first ROI. So it's region one here. We are going to check the, the vehicles. And now we will make something similar for also the second region, which is this position here where we can count the people crossing. So we'll, uh, we, we take this position. So we draw something like this. So I'm going out to take the points and I will make a second polygon right there. Uh, now with the array selection I'm done. So I have on this point, uh, on this specific region, the yellow one, we're going to check the flow of the vehicles while on this violet one, which is right here, if you don't see that, we're going to check the people, to, to count the people. So let's see when this ID39 crosses there. So I'm going to skip some frames so we we'll get that right away. Okay, here we are with the uh, with ID39 crossing that region. I'm not sure whether this is the best position to uh, to check the people. Probably I will put it still on later. We can change this and maybe put it right here because it's closer to the camera. It should be easier to detect the people. Now it's working well. There is only one person. There is nothing complex. But if there are multiple people, someone is hiding. Uh, the closer we are to the camera, the bigger the view, the better it is. So probably that's a bit far later. I might change that. Now that we have object detection, object tracking, ROI selection, we're going to the fourth step. Now on the step number four, we have to check if the ID is crossing a specific region. Probably before I talk about trajectory, but it's not necessary the trajectory. It would be necessary for something more advanced, not in this case. Now. When we detect an ID inside crossing a specific region, we want to save that. So uh, at the beginning here on the step number four, I added region one IDs set. So at the beginning, it's empty. Then when we find that, we add this inside. And the same we have for region two. And now let me show you what is the concept. I'm going to uh, run this one. And we will see this frame by frame, so it will be more clear. Uh, now, I'm freezing this frame by frame so that it will uh, be clear to understand the concept. Now, we're checking ID3, so this bounding box. And of this bounding box, we want to check if this is crossing region 1. The region 1 is the yellow polygon area right here. Is this bounding box inside? Well, it depends on what we consider inside. The bounding box, only half of this is inside, not all. So for simplicity right now, we're going to take only a point. So we consider the point, bottom left point of this square, of this rectangle, the point which must be inside of the polygon. Is this inside? Yes. If this is inside, we are adding these to the IDs. And in this case, you see regions one ids we have id number three which is the specific car so each car that is crossing will be added to this set now before proceeding with the video i want to show where is the specific function where we add and save the position oh here let's have a look at this code we have if class name is car so now we could put a lot of vehicles also car bus truck but now for simplicity i'm using only car to distinguish them from person. So we have only if class name is car, do one thing right here. If class name is person, do this other thing right here. If class name is car, we want to check if the car is inside the yellow polygon. How do we do that? We have an OpenCV function, which is point polygon test, where we check if region one, Region one is the yellow polygon. So just to clarify, this is region one, yellow polygon. And then a point of this blue rectangle. 
is the point of the blue rectangle inside region one. If the point is inside, we are going to add the ID to region one IDs. Same concept for, for the person. Instead of taking region one, we're taking region two for the person. So let's check right here. We have now ID 10, and then here we have the region two. Is ID 10 inside region two? It's not, and so that's why we have region two IDs, uh, it's empty. Now, to make sure that this is working correctly, I'm going now to go to the next frames of this video, and we should see when the car is coming, the car with ID two, and it's entering inside the polygon, we should see region one IDs increasing with the ID2 as well. And we see now ID2, so we know that the ID2 car is crossing the area. And now I'm slowly going to the following frames to get some other vehicles. So let's now get the car number six. And after this, we can make our final test. Um, it's a bit slow because I'm moving this frame by frame manually. And now we have car ID 6, we have 2, 3, 6. Now the concept from this is simple and you could guess how we're going to make the count. So now, finally we're going to make the count and then I will show you the video. We've, um, we are really high speed so that you can have a clue of how this is working. So. Let's go to the last step of this one and make, let's make the actual count. And now in this last step is the really simple code that we need to make the count. And why is so simple? Because all the work was pretty much done. When once we have all the IDs of region one and all the IDs of region two, we simply count the length of the IDs and we have the count, nothing more. So we are counting the length, the length right here and also I am displaying them in real time on the screen. I'm going now to run the code. We're going to see how the code is processing in real time. And later, just after this, we will see a really fast video with the counting. So let's see. Now we have cars too, because only two cars are, uh, have crossed so far. Uh, let's wait until uh, the count with car four. So the second car crossed. Now we're, we're checking the IDs number six, which is crossing right now. And by the way, uh, as you notice, after the polygon, what happens doesn't really matter. Third car. And now we are also focusing only on just one side of the road. We're not taking into consideration the second side of the road. So, so far only three cars. Now the fourth car started crossing right now the area. And so far the count is quite precise. And let's check, let's wait also for this person with ID 39, which is going to cross right here. So we have people zero. Let's take a look at when the person is entering the area. The person is crossing right now and we have people one. So the other people don't really matter. There is someone on the beach right there and it's not a problem. So we're counting only in this specific region. As you see this code already without much tuning, it can be improved, but without much tuning is working already pretty well. And depending on the scenario, you can, uh, you need, of course, uh, to make some changes on the code to make some different tuning, but you can definitely get a great result. And now uh, let's quickly see a fast, this video moving fast. To make a quick test, I save this uh, as a video and I'm sure that the car counting will be pretty much accurate while the people counting consider that it's far and some people might, might be hidden by the vehicles or other people, it should not be accurate at all, but uh, we should have at least an idea of like how many people are passing. So probably there, there will be some small mistake. 
and I'm going to check this. So for example, here are some, like there was the bus hiding the area. Some people were hidden. So we have total count of seven, why we should have five. But at least we get an idea, even if it's not like 100% precise from this position. While for the cars, we see six, seven, eight, nine, 10, even the car, probably this one was counted twice. With some tuning, of course, everything can be improved. We can get close to 100% accuracy of the car, at least from this camera position. While for the people, we should have a different camera settings. We should have the camera placed just on the sidewalk if we want to reach 100%. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to know more and if you want the code for this type of projects, everything will be on my course, Object Action with OpenCV and Deep Learning. I will be releasing a lot of new videos here on YouTube, so I recommend that you subscribe to the channel if you want to know more and to be updated with the last release. This is all for today. See you on the next video.